Hello guys, we're going to do some stuff with volume today. So we've been on 3D shapes for a little while. What we're going to move to now is instead of talking about how much it takes to cover the outside of a shape, we're going to talk about how much it takes to fill the inside of a 3D shape. And that's what volume is measuring. How many cubic inches, cubic centimeters, cubic whatever it takes to measure or to fill the inside of it. Now something to remember, a cubic inch, for example, is a one inch by one inch deep by one inch tall cube. That's what a cubic inch is. And so when we're talking cubic units, we're talking how many of those cubes would it take to fill it up? Now, some shapes, a cube doesn't fit in perfectly. When we get to like cylinders, for example, you can't put these square blocks into this circular object. And so you kind of think of it as fluid. So if those can move, how many of that amount that is in a one by one by one block would it take to fill that shape? So that's what we're talking about here with volume. So volume of a prism is the one that I want to do first here. Now we've already talked about a prism. Remember a prism has two congruent opposite faces that we call a basis and then it's a bunch of rectangles connecting it. And so we're going to look at this one first. This is what we call a rectangular prism because our base here is a rectangle. Our base is a rectangle and technically our basis on this could be the top and bottom, could be the right and left side, or could be the front and the back. Um, any of those would work for the bases. I'm just going to go with the bottom and top as the base, but that's not the only correct way of thinking about this one. Now, think about what we want to do with volume. We want to know how many one by one by one cubes does it take to fill this thing up. I'm going to take this base here, and I'm going to cut it into these cubes that we're talking about. So I'm going to put a line right across there, and I'm going to do a couple lines across the back here. So that we're basically splitting this into one by one squares. So we've got three across there, two back this way. Now, this is going to be a little bit tricky with the drawing here, but I think I can manage. I'm going to make this a cube back here now. All right, and so what we've got going on here is we've got this one by one by one cube. And remember, if we're doing volume, our question is, how many one by one by one cubes does it take to fill up this thing? Well, if you notice here, if I started to draw cubes on all six of these blocks, it would take six cubes to cover the bottom. And then we have to think from there, if it takes six cubes to cover the bottom, then how many stacks of six would I need until I fill up this whole shape? Well, since this is five inches and each of these is one inch high, it would take five stacks of six. Now, if you think about what this volume formula says, what we're coming up with here is exactly what this volume formula says. Figure out how many it takes to cover the bottom. If we're talking cover, that's area, right? And remember, from our formulas before, capital B stands for not base length, it's area of the base. And so, to find the area of the base, how many blocks would it take to cover the base? and then multiply that by how many stacks high we would need. So in this case, the base, it would take six. Because we have three by two, so the area of the base would be six, and then we'd have to stack five stacks of six high, and so the volume would be six times the height, or how many stacks we would need, five, and so the volume of this one would be 30. Now remember, we're talking how many one by one by one cubes, and so when we're doing volume, our units are going to be cubic inches, cubic feet, cubic yards, if it was something really huge, cubic miles. Um, and so those are the types of units we could use for volume. Now there are some other units of volume that you've probably heard of. Gallons, for example, or fluid ounces. Those are units of volume, and they can be converted from these as well. The only thing with those is they don't have anything to do with length. And so I would have to do something with lengths to find the volume of an object first, most likely, and then convert it to gallons or fluid ounces or something like that. We're actually going to do an example of that in just a minute. So I wanted to do one more with finding the volume. Um, this one is a little more intuitive because you can actually see, you could just fill the whole thing up with cubes and it would just fill exactly to the top. You wouldn't have to cut any cubes or anything like that. That's not going to work on this one. Because if I start to try to cover the base with cubes, I'm going to run into a problem because some of them would have to be like cut. And so 
what we're going to do, first off, we need to think about the base here. I did this on purpose because this is something that trips people up often. The base is not the rectangle on this prism. I know that's the bottom, but remember, base does not mean bottom on a prism. The bases are the two congruent opposite faces. That means the bases are these two triangles. Those are the two congruent opposite faces connected by rectangles, which means this is what we would call a triangular prism, would be the mathematical name of this solid. And so if I want the area of the base, that would be either this triangle or this triangle. They're congruent. It doesn't matter which one we use. And so I'm going to use the front one. And I put this length here, but that length, I don't have it labeled here, but isn't it six feet from back there? And so if I want to find the area of the base, that involves finding the area of a triangle. And the area of a triangle is one half times the base of the triangle. The base of the triangle is four times the height of the triangle. The height of the triangle is six. All right, so there's how we would find the area of the base. And just doing the math there, that's 24. Half of 24 is 12. So the area of the base here is 12. And then if I want the volume of this thing, volume is area of the base, so 12, times the height. Now remember, this is another thing that trips people up. Height doesn't always go vertical. Height is distance between the two bases. My one base is this triangle, my other base is this triangle, which means my height is the 10 feet, the distance from the one base to the other base. And so my volume here would be 12 times 10, or in other words, my volume is 120, and since that was in feet, that would be cubic feet. Just to give you a random application of where you would use something like cubic feet, um, if you ever buy an exhaust fan for like a bathroom exhaust or something like that, they're measured in CFMs. CFM stands for cubic feet per minute. So it's how much air, what volume of air that fan can move in a minute. Um, and so basically you could figure out the cubic feet of your bathroom and figure out how long it would take to cycle out the entire air in your bathroom and that's how you know what size um, fan to buy. So let's see if we can do one more shape here with volume today. So that's prisms. I also wanted to talk about how to find the volume of a cylinder real quick. Now we're going to see this is basically the same thing. There's really no change to the formula. Do you notice the volume of a cylinder? Since it's the same on both ends, just like a prism is, you want to figure out how much it would take to cover the circular base in this case, and then how many stacks of that you would need. So it's still the area of the base times the height. Now I have one more thing I put in here though. Prisms, the base can be a lot of different shapes. We saw a rectangle and we saw a triangle just now, but it could be even other shapes. However, a cylinder, the base is a circle, period. That is the definition of cylinder. The base has to, two bases, I should say, have to be cylinders. So if I wanted to find the volume of a cylinder, it is the area of the base times the height, but the way I find the area of a circle, or the area of the base, is pi times radius squared. So I could simplify this, or make it more specific, I guess, and call it pi times radius squared for the area of the base, then times height. So that's the formula for the volume of a cylinder. And so I just left this one blank because I wanted to do a practical example for this one. So here's what I've got. I've got this really interesting vintage Dukes of Hazard lunchbox. Um, and so this was mine when I was a little guy. And so I wanted to figure out how much does this little drink cup hold. And so to do that, we need to figure out the volume of this. And I'm going to do some measuring here. Now, I'm not going to measure the outside of this because this is like insulated. So the inside is actually a, a decent amount smaller than the outside. So I'm going to be measuring the cylinder on the inside of this. And so measuring this and then taking into account where the lid goes down in there because you can't have liquid there. This is four and a half inches deep. All right. And then measuring across the top here, the opening. Now, this is the whole diameter is two inches. All right. So. Let me draw a picture of what we've got going on on this cup then. So drawing a picture of just the inside of the cup, here's what we have. We have a cylinder, and the height of this cylinder is four and a half inches. So that's that part. The radius of this cylinder, well, the diameter is what we measured is two inches.
However, if you notice in our formula, the thing we really need is radius. If the diameter is 2 inches, the radius is 1 inch. So to find the volume of this thing, then, we want to do pi times radius squared times height. Radius is 1, so I've got pi times 1 squared times height, which is 4.5. Now, 1 squared is still 1, so that doesn't really change. So if I leave this in terms of pi, this is 4.5 times pi is all that's going to be left here. Now, I want to get this as a decimal because I want to convert this to ounces in a second. So we can see how many ounces of fluid this cup holds. And so 4.5 is 4.5 pi is approximately 14.14. And so that is in cubic inches. Now I had to look up this conversion just to be honest with you. I didn't know this off the top of my head, but you can look this up pretty easily how many or convert cubic inches to fluid ounces. And so if you convert this into fluid ounces, this is about 7.83 ounces. And I should say fluid ounces because dry ounces and fluid ounces are different things. Dry ounces are actually a unit of weight. Fluid ounces are a unit of volume. And so the volume of that little thermos is about 7.83 fluid ounces is how much that would hold. And so they probably marketed this as an 8-ounce container. Um, so there's how we find the volume of a cylinder. And I just wanted to mention this because you might see volume listed in things like gallons or fluid ounces. Those are still volume. They're just not volume that has to do with length. Um, but it is how volume is measured a lot of times, especially if you have like a swimming pool or something like that. It'll be measured in gallons, not in things like cubic feet or cubic inches most likely. So there's how we find the volume of prisms and the volumes of cylinders. Later, we'll start to talk about the volumes of our other shapes, pyramids and cones as well.